Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to look at reflections. This video is targeted for my pre-calculus students. Um, so we'll just go through these examples. Uh, the first four, we're just drawing the picture uh, that is the reflection that we're asked for. So it's pretty straightforward. So uh, the first example says graphically reflecting a function across the x-axis. Okay, so we want to reflect this thing over the x-axis. I think the easiest way is to find some key or critical points here that we can use. So I'm going to put that one in right there. And we see the two endpoints already here. So this is just a semicircle basically. So if it's one, two, three, four away from the x-axis this way, it needs to be one, two, three, four away from the x-axis this way. So we'll put a point there. This point here is uh, we're, we're lining it left and right. Uh, we're lining it up perfectly. And then we're just the distance. If we're reflecting over the x-axis, the distance from the x-axis is going to be the same on just it's this far from it here. So we need it the same distance here. That's all we're doing and then we're lining it left and right we're just lining it straight straight up and down here so uh, this is one away here so it's gonna be one away here and we're one two three four away here so we need to be one two three four away here and this is not going to be perfect because it's pretty hard to draw on this and uh, it would look something like that okay not perfect but Good enough. Okay, next one says graphically reflecting a function across the y-axis. Okay, so same process applies up and down wise. We're just going to go straight across. Okay, but the um, the left and right distance needs to be the same uh, from the y-axis. So we're about one two away here. So that point will be one about two away here. And then this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just past seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just past seven right there. And then a, a key point would be this one right here, and that's one, two, three, four, about four and a half, we'll call it. One, two, three, four, and about half. Okay, and then we just connect these points. All right, that's all we're doing. And next. Next we have example three says graphically reflecting a function across the line y equals x which is a 45 degree line okay the reason that this is important is when we start talking about inverse functions remember functions that are inverses of one another are reflections about the line y equals x which is what we are actually uh, doing here so um, Remember the line y equals x is pretty easy because it just goes right through. If we're looking at these grid squares, it's going right through uh, each of these corners. If we graph the line y equals x, okay, so that these points I'm graphing now are are key critical points, okay, because that's the line y equals x, right? Linear through the origin y equals x and the line is going to touch each of the corners of those grid squares. Okay, so when we're graphing, this one's a little more difficult to graph, I think. Um, the, the easiest thing to do, I think, is uh, we want to get these endpoints. That's the most important. So if we're reflecting just this section right here about the uh, y equals x line, uh, we are going to be um, the same distance this way so imagine that that this graph is going to cross right here this is going to be the intersection point right there so we're shaped like this on the left side or the top side of this y equals x line so we're going to be a mirror image about that like that let me redo that it's not very good we're going to be a mirror image of just this section just right here like this okay so that's that part not perfect notice we're equidistant this point is supposed to be equidistant uh, from the y equals x line is this point all right and then we want to do the same thing here so we want to reflect this part about the line y equals x so we're going to draw it up like this 
okay so we want to be imagine being equidistant from the y equals x line so we're about that far uh, from the y equals x line there so we want to be about that same distance so somewhere right in there uh, with this last point so we're just going to uh, approximate this and it's going to look something like that right there so realize this point is the same distance from the y equals x line as this point this point is the same distance from the y equals x line as this point. And that, that one's really uh, more difficult to draw than the others. Okay, next, graphically reflecting a function across the origin. Okay, all we're doing there is we're going to reflect it over the y-axis and then over the x-axis. It wouldn't be wrong to reflect it over the x-axis and then over the y-axis either. So the easiest way to graph that is notice we are one two away from the y-axis so we're going to be one two away from the y-axis so our y-coordinate uh, needs to be right here and then we're one two three four away from the x-axis so we're going to be four away from the x-axis this way so two away from the y-axis and one two three four away from the x-axis so we'll put that right there that's that point right there uh, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half from the y-axis, and it's still one, two, three, four away from the x-axis. So we need to do that same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half from the y-axis. Then we come down to our x-axis, and we need to be four away from the x-axis. One, two, three, four. So right here, and then. Our, um, our point right here is right in the center of these two points and it's one, two, three away. So we can make that pretty easy. We'll get right in the middle, one, two, three away. So that'd be right here and it looks something like that right there. Okay, so that's reflecting over the origin. You ref flip it over the y-axis and then over the x-axis or vice versa. Either way, you're going to get the same result. If we flip this graph over the x-axis and then over the y-axis, we're still going to end right here. My drawing skills are not very good. I'm just, as you can probably tell. All right, let's move on to the next example. All right, example five says, using a table of points, produce the reflection across the x-axis. Make a new table in which we change the signs of the y value. So think about it. If we want to take this point right here and reflect it over the x-axis, notice our x-coordinate stays the same, right? If we take this point and reflect it over the x-axis, it's going to be uh, approximately right here, right? Our x coordinate stayed the same, but our y coordinate just changed the sign. Our y coordinate is still equidistant from the x axis. So the absolute value doesn't change, just the sign changes. We're now on the negative side of the x axis, meaning we have a negative y coordinate, whereas we had a positive y coordinate here. So just when we reflect across the x axis, we leave the x coordinate exactly the same. The absolute value of the corresponding y coordinate will be the same, just the sign changes. So to shorten that up, when you reflect across the x-axis, you just change the sign of all the y values. That's it. So we're going to rewrite this. Negative 5, negative 2, x-coordinates stay the same, negative 1 and 4. And then we're going to take all of these right here and rewrite them, but just change the sign. So instead of positive 4, negative 4. Instead of positive 2, negative 2. Instead of po negative 1, positive 1. Instead of positive 1, negative 1. Okay, so now we're just going to plot these points. So we already had 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. So that one's done. We need negative 1, uh, 1. So we go negative 1, 1. That's right there. That one's done. Negative 2, negative 2. 2, negative 2, that one's done, and then negative 5, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So now we just uh, basically connect those points, so we just work, we can work left to right here, 
and it looks something like that. The picture is more confusing, I think, than just plotting the points. All right, next, example six. Using a table of points, produce a reflection across the y-axis. Make a new table in which we change the signs of the x values. Okay, so they tell us what to do, but let's just think about it. If we want to reflect, say, this point across the y-axis, our y coordinate is going to be the exact same over here. It's just our x coordinate is going to change. We will stay the same distance from the y axis. We will just be on the opposite side. So all we're doing is changing the sign of the x coordinate. Okay? So our y values will stay the same here. Because look, if we reflect this over here, our y coordinate did not change. So it's going to be 4, 2, negative 1, 1. Now we just take all of these values and change the signs. So instead of negative 5, positive 5. Instead of negative 2, positive 2. Instead of negative 1, positive 1. Instead of positive 4, negative 4. And I think instead of trying to memorize these rules, just think about it. If you want to reflect across this axis, across the y-axis, you can't change your y-coordinate. You're not going to change your y-coordinate over here. It's going to be over here. It's just your x-coordinate changes signs. So I think that's easier to do than trying to memorize rules, but of course you can do that too. So let's graph these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 1. And we just draw them in left to right, so there, there, and there. Okay, all right, let's look at the next example. All right, example seven. Using a table of points, produce a reflection across the line y equals x. Make a ta new table in which we interchange the x and y values. Remember, this is important because when we start talking about inverse functions later, they are reflections of one another across the line y equals x. And that occurs because we just switch the x and y values. If you recall back when you in Algebra 2 when you worked with inverse functions you could just take the first function switch x and y out and solve for y again and that would produce your inverse function. So we're just switching out our x and y's. So now I'm taking all of these values and I'm just going to rewrite them in my x column. I'm taking these y values I'm going to rewrite them in my x column. So 4, 2, negative 1, 1. I'm taking my x values here. I'm not changing the signs. Take my x values here and I'm going to plot them in my y column. So negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, and 4. It's that simple. Now let's just plot these points. So 4, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there. 2, negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. That's our intersection right there. Notice they're the same. Okay, so we're going to have that intersection point. And then we have uh, 1, 4 here. So that is going to be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we can just uh, work these uh, points in. Um, just like this, so we'll just connect these here, here, and here. Okay? All right, let's look at the next example. Quickly, too, I just want to discuss this y equals x um, quickly. Notice, remember when we drew these, uh, we just made the reflection from the graph. Remember, these points are equidistant. If we draw a line perpendicular to this y equals x line, this distance right here from the y equals x line to this point is equidistant the same distance as from this y equals x line to this point. Okay, If we make a perpendicular bisector of this y equals x line, these are equidistant. That's an, an important symmetry to understand. So same thing here. This point, I hope you can see that. I'm going to darken that in. So if we draw a perpendicular bisector that's not a very good perpendicular bisector, but you see this point is equidistant from the y equals x line as this point right here from the y equals x line. These points are equidistant because they're right on the y equals x line, right? And then these, this point out here and this point out here would have the same distance if we draw between the points perpendicular bisector, we will get the same distance, okay? 
All right, last example, example eight. Using a table of points, produce a reflection across the origin. Make a new table in which we change the signs of both X and Y. So our rule is we just change the signs of both X and Y. So we're going to rewrite these coordinates the same uh, absolute value, just change the sign. So instead of negative five, it's positive five. Instead of negative two, it's positive two. Instead of negative one, it's positive one. Instead of positive four, it's negative four. Instead of for our y coordinates now, instead of being positive four, it's negative four. Instead of positive two, it's negative two. Instead of negative one, it's positive one. Instead of positive one, it's negative one. So we just changed uh, the signs of everything. That's all that we're doing. So let's plot this and then we'll we'll kind of talk about why that happens. So one, two, three, four, five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's a point, 2, negative 2, so that would be right there, oops, messed that one up, it's kind of hard to, these lines are too dark here, 1, 2, 1, 2, right there, okay, and 1, 1, that would be 1, 1, and negative 4, that would be one, two, three, four, negative one. And then we just connect these left to right, so something like that. Okay, looking at this picture, it looks pretty confusing. So let's talk about uh, as far as why we just change the coordinates. Well, let's think about it. Let's pick a section that'll be pretty easy to talk about. I'm gonna just pick this little section of my original graph. I'm gonna draw back over it in pink, right here where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so if I want just this section, let's talk about where this section in pink now ends up when we actually reflect it. Okay, so if we want to reflect this over the origin, remember when we reflect over the origin, we reflect over the y axis and then we take it and reflect that part over the x axis. So let's think about that. If we reflect the this section right here over the y axis, all that we're going to do is we're going to change the sign of our x coordinate, right? So right here, we're right on the x axis and we're about one and a half away positive so we want to go one and a half away negative so that would be about right there and our uh, x coordinate here our y coordinate stays the same so we're at uh, positive one and our x coordinate is one two three four away so we're going to go one two three four away here okay so here here it is after we have the pink section after we have reflected it over the um, just the y-axis, okay? Well, now we have to take the pink part and actually reflect it back over the x-axis, right? So that would end up right here. You can see a pretty easy reflection. So that's where our orange part ended right there after we reflected it over the y-axis and over the x-axis. And remember, when we reflect over the x-axis, we just take each of the y-coordinates and change their sign. So we reflect over the y-axis and over the x-axis. So this pink section ended right here where it's green now after reflecting over the y and over the x. Hope, hopefully that makes sense. All right, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.